Hello everyone and welcome to this new series of video where we'll go over the new software releases for the Omniscan X3 as well as Omni PC. Uh, we'll present you the new features, demonstrate it, uh, also explain what are the benefits so that each and every one of you can get the most out of your uh, Omniscan instrument. My name is Stéphane Couture. I work as a Global Product Support Specialist for Olympus NDT here in Quebec City. And I'm joined today by Louis-Philippe Gendron from the Omniscan Product Management Team, also from Quebec. Uh, today we'll present the MXU 5.6 software version, um, starting with uh, Louis-Philippe. Thank you, Stéphane, for the introductions. So let's start by showing you how to download the last version of MXU 5.650. So now you can see we are on the website of olympusems.com and to be on that page, you need to click on the support software download and this page will appear. For the version of Omni P, Omni, OmniScan for MXU, you just have to click on OmniScan right there and click details. Once you arrive at the page, you can see the descriptions of your MXU software and what is the new things here is now we only have an MXU package 5.650 alone. Before that, we're going to have to download three different parts of the software and install each one of them alone, one by one. And then once you, and for download the files, you just have to click download here. So prior to that, we had to install the MXU software, the system, the probe and wedge update, and that could lead to potential mismatch between the software versions. Now with this unified uh, installer, we remove that possibility of error from the installation process. Exactly right. At this step, I will let Stefan explain how to use a saving workflow. Yes, thank you, Lou Philippe. So uh, the file saving workflow uh, with the X3, we received a lot of comments from our customers uh, regarding it, mainly the data file saving workflow. So we heard you and we acted. So I will present you the new data file saving manager. So first of all, you see that I have an acquired data file. I'm currently in... Uh, analysis mode, and if I press the save key from the front face of the instrument, I am prompt with the data file saving uh, manager. So as you can see, I can uh, type in a data file name. Uh, let's call, uh, whoops, let's call this one increment. There you go. So if I leave it like that, and press the uh, accept key. You can see increment, and if I press save again, I am prompt with the data file saving manager once again. Below the new file name, you can see there are three options, uh, file name increment, none, numeric, or timestamp. So if I select numeric, uh, you can see from the preview, it will automatically add a incremental numeric value. So increment numeric increment underscore 0001.0 that. And then I can select if I want the data file manager to be prompt every time I press save or not. So in this case, if I have to save multiple successive uh, data file, I can select to not have this window prompt every time and as I save my data file, you see that it goes from increment one, press the key, increment two, press the key again, increment three. And I don't have to type it in every time. I don't have to uh, close the dialog window every time. Uh, if I want to go back into the data file save manager, I use the drop down file menu, select save data as, and from here, I can select the new option, either no increment, numeric increment, or you can also have the uh, time stamp with the data file name. So in this case, increment, the date, and the current time. 
So mainly, if I understand well, Stefan, that will give give the inspector more time to do the inspections, because before that, that that take more time to saving and everything. Am I right? More time, and also it will uh, it will not break the, the 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 workflow of the inspector. You can just keep pressing save as he goes from one well to the next one. Excellent. Now moving on to the next item on our list, and that will be the uh, configuration or the adjustment of the weld overlay as seen here on the go or uh, during the analysis process. Uh, I'm currently using the OmniPC uh, software, OmniPC 5.6, and uh, I have a sample data file. You know that, That's a simple coupon with a sample weld in the middle. Uh, so prior to 5.6, there was basically no way of reviewing the scan plan. Um, now with this one, if you go under view, you have the new scan plan view available with OmniPC only. So now similar to the onboard scan plan of the X3, you now have the ability to review uh, the probe positioning, the coverage of the weld, the focalization, and all of those parameters that weren't uh, accessible prior to 5.6. And Stefan, this software is yes. free, isn't it? Correct, correct. The five, as, as you have purchased UX3, you have access to all of the software updates for free. And the OmniPC software itself is complementary. So it's a simple download. You don't have to use any security dongle. Uh, you just have to have uh, a PC that meets the requirements. Excellent. Uh, so scan plan viewer. Uh, also, I was talking about adjusting the weld. So if you go under probe and part, you have all of the available weld parameters. So in case the weld changes uh, throughout the scan length or one or more parameters were not correctly adjusted, you can adjust both or one with uh, the controls in analysis, whether you're using OmniPC or the uh, onboard MXU software. So here and there. So this is for um, a simple butt weld configuration. If you have more complex geometries, uh, such as here, uh, like this is an inspection, oh. manual inspection of quick, a... Uh, quick what? question about that, Stefan. Yeah, Have sure. You, do you use two different LBPC or is that the same session? Correct. You can have two separate OmniPC instances running in parallel. Oh, excellent. So you can have two running in parallel to compare files. You can adjust the window to visualize them simultaneously, like such, have them full screen or not. So that's another improvement over the old uh, OmniPC 4.4. That's correct, uh, Louis-Philippe. Good, continue. Yeah, so here I have the manual inspection of uh, FRP flange. Uh, it's not that easy to understand. Uh, basically, you have the uh, flange that is cracked on top and you have quite a bit of corrosion in the inside corner. So to make this a little more obvious, uh, we, can we can import uh, 2D drawings, 2D CAD drawings in the format of uh, DXF files. You just have to select the correct overlay. It will be under FRP flange here. And as you can see, my 2D drawing got imported. From there, I can adjust the X and Y axis to reflect where the, 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 the probe and the signal were positioned. So now it's easier to see where the crack was located, as well as how deep the corrosion got inside the uh, corner of the flange. Nice. And what is the format you can import into OmniPC for your custom overlay? That's uh, DXF. So that's a very simple 2D drawing. You can use uh, 
NDT software such as uh, ESBeam tool that produce simplified DXF that works very well with this one or other uh, CAD drawing software that will uh, also work. Let's continue with the TFM sparse. Like you can see here, I'm, I'm, I am inside of MXU right now. I just want to show you quickly what kind of setup I have. So I'm going to click on groups and you can see here, here I have 3T and 4T for the TFM. Before the scan, I will select correctly my uh, inspection tools is the encoder. The one I use is the mini wheel for this example. All right, and the last step, last step for uh, the sparse is to make sure I'm on a full matrix and I want to make sure I am at uh, the auto max for the acquisition speed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you can you can see on the left the screen of the Omniscan X3 and on the right my hand scanning the plate. And now you can see on the screen that I have a black bar. That's mean no data has been acquired acquired because I was a little bit too fast. But my when I once I scan it the part here, I I, I try to be slow as much as possible. Mm-hmm. So now you were limited to 25 millimeters per second yep. on this scan. And I now will switch the matrix to one on two. And that increases the speed of the acquisition rate. Yeah, basically doubling it. Yeah. So you can see here, I scan a little bit more fast, but again, uh, when I did not have, uh, I did not do it uh, too too slowly. So <laughs> I have a little bit faster on the hands and yeah. a little less missed data. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, the full matrix one, but in term of result, it's pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. And again, I would switch that to for the next one on one on three. Yeah. That's mean. Every pulsar, one pulsar on three will be used for the acquisitions. Correct. Correct. So this acquisition strategy with TFM, basically, um, instead of firing every element individually from the 32 element probe, now we fire one out of two, one out of three, one out of four. So we can get greater acquisition speed by reducing the number of uh, pulsing elements but we keep a very good uh, TFM signal by still receiving the signal on all of the element individually. So that acquisition strategy uh, can actually be used to, to um, make the TFM technology more accepted in the market. One of the big drawbacks has been productivity of this technique. Yeah. Now with two groups, we can reach 100 millimeter per second, which is commonly accepted as a very good uh, manual scanning speed. For this kind of situation. Yeah. Thank you right. for this explanation, Stefan. And now you can see here the difference with, with each different setup. And when I change the sparse on different, you know, a sparse one on two, 50 millimeters per second, one on three, 72 millimeters per second. And the last one, one on four, close to 100 millimeters per second. So, and you can see very quickly that the result, it's pretty much the same. Light difference, but if we think about resolution and things, so another view yeah. here, a more zoom in about the difference here. So there is no so much difference and you can scan the, 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 the plate more faster. We'll, we'll put those differences on the scanner tech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but one out of three, no yeah. more lines of missed data. And one out of one on on four. So yeah. And as you can see, we still detect all of the indications uh, on the bottom group, on the top group, with the same resolution, same length, but we can go four times faster during the acquisition. 
All right, so that concludes uh, the part of uh, explaining you uh, the star feature of the 5.6.0. And now if you want to see the complete list of this feature, you can go with OmniPC under the uh, system info preference and you will have access on that list. And you can have the same list in MXU by clicking on the burger menu, preference and about. And every Although, versions will have uh, information about this feature here. Correct, correct. So every major software release, every uh, maintenance software release, if you have questions, you can always refer to those lists um, to have the full, the complete list of improvements and, and new features that were added. And also this information is available on the www.olympuscms.com. Uh, uh, supports software download and under the release note of the versions. Very true, very true. So thank you uh, for today, Louis-Philippe. Uh, if you have any questions about the MXU 5.6 software or, or on the OmniScan in general, you can contact uh, either of us or your local sales representative and we'll be more than happy to assist you, answer your questions and get you up and running with your instrument. Thank you, Stefan, again, and stay tuned. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye.